All right. I'm at page uh, 153. Should be 153 for most people. If I'm off by a page or two, but I think it's page 153. Tell me if I'm wrong. So inventory is kind of a sort. There's a sort section. I just want to emphasize like a few points. Good news, IFRS and ASPE totally converged. Don't have to learn differences between IFRS and ASPE. As we do in so many sections, here you don't. Now, people look. The reason I care about the definition, I'm always worried about identification of an asset and putting it into the right section. If you don't realize something is inventory and you put it into another section, you're not going to get the counting right. And this particularly worries me about the asset side of the balance sheet because we have a lot of assets, especially in IFRS, they've added assets. You know, I got inventory, I got PPE, I got investment property, I got intangibles, I've got agriculture, I have, you know, you have a lot of them. So the reason, again, I'm highlighting the definition is not because I need you to go memorize the definition, I just need you to understand what would be inventory so you put it into the right section. That's the point. Okay, everybody knows this probably. Inventory, what's my accounting? I measure at the lower of cost and NRV. So do me a favor, people, don't say market because NRV might be the best determinant of market, but it doesn't say market, it says NRV. Fine. This, I think most people know, just a couple of little twists here. What do you capitalize into your inventory? So it's going to be all your costs of uh, purchase, of conversion. What do I mean by the second point? You have to allocate fixed and variable based on normal capacity. What do I mean by that? Give me an example. What do I mean by normal capacity, fixed and variable cost, overhead has to be allocated based on normal capacity? I understand that min overhead is not normally allocated. Okay, fine, I get that. Anyone know what I mean, normal capacity? Okay, people, what they mean, nobody's answering this. What they mean is, let's say there's a strike. That's not normal. Now I'm not using the plant. There's a strike. So should I start playing around with my overhead of how much I allocate the inventory? Because now it's a strike. Obviously, it's going to be different. The answer is no. You should not start playing around. It's temporary. You should do it based on normal capacity. That's what they mean. And of course, everybody knows this, I have my restriction, I cannot use LIFO, okay? I cannot use LIFO, um, I have to use FIFO, weighted average, whatever, that's all fine. Okay, here's an example of the normal capacity where you would not let a blip influence you. If my fixed overhead is a million and my capacity normally is a million, but this period, I don't care, strike, whatever the reason is, okay, I only produce 500,000 units. Should I change my allocation? Should I allocate a million to 500? Should I allocate, um, now I only produce 500,000 units? So would I allocate a dollar to each unit of inventory or $2? And the answer is, I don't care if you only have 500,000, okay, 500,000 units to the poor market. You should allocate based on the million units, based on the normal capacity. And that means you're going to be expensing half of it, because only half of it goes to inventory. Okay. You're just doing it based on normal capacity. Does that make sense? All right. Specific identification, you're, you're allowed to use that. It's not a problem. Okay. I'm just kind of defining the method here. Same cost formula, okay, fine, use for all inventories, okay, fine. Now, people, here's a hard question, but it's an important question. 
am I allowed to value inventory items separately if they're kind of alike? Or is it better if I group them? Am I allowed to do whatever I want? If I'm not allowed, what's the preference? Anyone know? No? All right. People look. The handbook's preference. Okay, similar items can be grouped. Thank you very much. Excellent. So like I said, okay, good. The handbook's preference is really to do a separate, uh, um, is to separate out inventory items and value them separately. But they allow you to group, as Zoya is saying, they allow you to group similar and like items. Why do I care? Why do I care? If I break them out, okay, fine. I don't know, five plus five is 10. Or I show 10 on the, on the balance sheet. Like, why do I care? The totals are the same. It doesn't really influence, you know, the totals when you do this. It doesn't really influence the income statement, maybe. Why do I care? If but one word, you can answer this. Two words. The answer I'm looking for, possible write down. This is an important question. If I group desks and sofas, my cost is 300,000 and my NRV combined is 310, I have no write down. I have no write down. But if I treat them separately, the desks I'm okay, the cost is 100, the NRV is 120, I'm good. No write down. But if the NRV is 190, Below the 200, I write it down, 10,000. So if I'm doing it separately, I may end up with a write down. But if I'm doing it together, I may bury the write down. This identical issue comes up in revenue recognition where you have multiple contracts. And the question is, do I do the same revenue rec policy for all the contracts? I combine them all, construction contracts or not? Same issue comes up. Why does it matter? It matters because I can bury a loss when I combine things. That's the point. Any questions? Okay, now, changes in fair net realizable value. Okay, for inventory, well, um, I can't write it up. I'm not doing market, it's lower of cost or NRV. I can write it down. Where does the write down go? Income statement. And by the way, I think I forgot to mention that. Okay, no, they mentioned that under intangibles. People, where does the write up, if you do revaluation method for intangibles, I'm flipping for a second, where does the write up go? It goes to OCI, not to the income statement. In this case for inventory, if I'm writing it down, of course it goes to the income statement. But guess what I'm allowed to do? I'm allowed to reverse the write down. And that also, of course, goes through the income statement. Okay? I'm allowed to reverse the write down if the NRV goes back up. All right. So, people look. Is everyone good with that? So, as I said before, inventory is not such a, it's not, you know, whatever, it's not a very long topic, okay? It doesn't take me that long to get to go through it. But again, what worries me is that, number one, you have to classify the item as inventory. Number two, you know the basic accounting for inventory, lower of cost or NRV. Number three, they could give you different costs where you have to go and figure out which ones do I capitalize in inventory. Number four, you could have the whole issue of, do I treat you know, all the items together or do I separate them out? And number five, that could make a difference because of a possible write down. And just realize you can reverse the write down. And you're always working through P&L when you're dealing with inventory. You can't go above cost. I can't write it up back above cost, but I can reverse the write down. 
and that goes through PL because I wrote it down through PL. Okay, questions? Any questions on inventory? Everyone good? Okay, so people, whoever's watching the video, I hope that the video was useful.